I'm here with Allison John and her lawyer, Lee Merritt. Allison is the mother of Botham John, who was shot in his home by a Dallas police officer. Good morning to you both. Good morning. This first question is for you. Officer Amber Geiger says she accidentally entered your son's apartment, which then led to the fatal shooting after he allegedly ignored her verbal commands. Do you believe Amber entered your son's apartment with the intent to murder him? I think based on a number of articles that I've read that she appears to have entered with the intent to kill him because she was a police officer and based on protocols that police officers ought to have used, she certainly didn't use them. The sequence of events that she outlined in her affidavit does not appear logical because one would, at would enter the apartment and even if they saw the door ajar, the first inclination would be to turn on the lights that are closest to the doorway. She didn't do that. She gave verbal commands, she said, that were not followed. It showed that he didn't even use any aggression. So the, the fatal shot is just unimaginable. It, it, it does not make sense. So there's no, I have no other choice but to believe that she did it intentionally. Lee, this isn't your first pro high profile case involving a police shooting. How do you choose which cases to take and what made you decide to take this case on? You know, that's an important question and when I get involved I really look at police officer behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, whether, they were, whether or not they were operating inside or outside of the laws uh, for the use of force. And this case is, is certainly a case that's egregious in terms of the behavior, entering someone else's home, even under, even under the facts that she described, if they were to be true, and we, we don't believe them to be true, but even under the facts that she described, she says she, she gave commands to what she perceived as a silhouette. Mm -hmm. And when it failed to comply, she resorted to deadly force. There were so many other options at that point. She could have retreated, which she had a responsibility to do, mm -hmm. seeing that she was in, um, she was in, uh, his apartment, or she could have um, uh, used some other form of for force. There, there was no justification such as, uh, and then the person came toward me or acted aggressively and I feared for my life. It's, it's just absent from her explanation. And, and so, uh, and, and like uh, Ms. John has explained, we don't believe that to be the case, but even under her, her, her version of events, the, the, the use of force was unjustified. Allison, you've accused the police department of trying to smear your son's name, primarily through releasing the discovery of marijuana in his apartment after the shooting and other information like that. What is it that you want the world to know about your son? Well, my son, I don't even have to say to the world what my son was. The several testimonies that we have gotten from Facebook, from Twitter, from the, few, the memorial that we had in Dallas and several private messages that I've received came from people who knew him mm -hmm. and who said how much of an outgoing, a loving person that he was. Um, I have to accuse the police department of smearing my son's name because to come up with marijuana being in his apartment, mm -hmm. it appears that Amber Geiger was the one who was out of her mind for her to have made so many mistakes, for her to drive onto the fourth floor, for her to walk onto the fourth ramp, for her to go to, the, to 1478 when it was clearly lit, for her to, you know, there are so many things that seem that she was out of her mind. So to now put it on a dead man who cannot say what happened really brings out the anger in me. And I have no choice but to say that it was a smear campaign. Lee, you tweeted this video of the fire doors that shut in Botham's building in response to an ABC affiliate report about the door being left ajar. What responsibility do you think the media holds in uh, what Allison has referred to as the smear campaign? How have we helped, as the media helped, set the narrative? It's, it's 
really important what the media reports and how responsibly they re choose to report information. Right now, Dallas police officers are actively sharing details they believe to be exculpatory mm -hmm. towards Ms. Geiger or details that they believe confirm her story, while the district attorney, who has a lot more information available, information that's inculpatory towards Ms. Geiger, she's not going to report that information. Mm -hmm. And so as, as the Dallas Police Department tries to win this case in the court of public opinion and begin to convince people who may potentially be jurors in the future that this young woman had no malice, that this was a big accident, uh, the media has a responsibility either to not report the information that's unconfirmed mm -hmm. um, or to to show uh, to do, do the due diligence to report all sides of the information. There's so much about her story that's implausible and some of it that, that's impossible, information that's in the public domain. And so if media is going to engage in sort of this information war, they need to uh, be more neutral and not simply parry information by uh, officers who, who obviously have a dog in the fight. You've been extremely critical of the Dallas Police Department's behavior so far. Do you believe that at this point they're capable of conducting a fair investigation into one of their own? No, no. I, I, I rarely believe that law enforcement officers are, they shouldn't be given the responsibility of investigating their own. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the Dallas Police Department um, knew that, and so they went out and brought in the Texas Rangers. Unfortunately, the Texas Rangers is an organization that is a law enforcement organization that notoriously sides with law enforcement, even in the most extreme set of circumstances. And so it's going to be the responsibility of the, uh, the district attorney's office, who again has a unique relationship with law enforcement, generally speaking, uh, to to thoroughly go over the information being presented to them. Um, and it's going to be the responsibility of my office as well as, as we run a parallel investigation to turn over evidence to the, uh, the district attorney's office. There's been some speculation that this po there's a possibility that the officer in question knew uh, Botham Jean before the incident. Is there any evidence of that so far? Yeah, no evidence whatsoever. Mm. Uh, Botham was someone who lived in community, uh, not only with his family and with his friends, uh, but he, he left footprints about almost everything that he did. And so uh, from what he was text messaging that night to the people he spoke with, uh, to his longtime friendships, to the, the, the extremely close and intimate relationship he had with his mother and his sister and his brother and his father, uh, there, him dating an older police officer would be news uh, to the family. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's something that it was never, we have no, no way of, uh, of verifying or backing up. Allison, another question for you. Earlier this week, nine protesters were released from jail for protesting the shooting outside of a Dallas Cowboys game. What's the community reaction so far mean to you? Oh, I'm really grateful for the um, support that I'm getting from the community in Dallas, in New York, in my country, St. Lucia, in Florida, in Atlanta, in Canada, in London. Um, I understand St. Croix. So it's widespread and I'm really appreciative of their efforts. I'm really grateful to the nine in Dallas who had to um, stay in jail. Imagine they stayed in jail longer than Amber. And I'm sorry that they had to go through it, but I'm really looking forward to heightened protest action to really cause the sensitivity that is required of the officials in Dallas to do what is necessary to see that justice is served for my son. All right. And so with all that in mind, Allison, what then does justice look like for you? Justice for me looks like, number one, that Amber receives a murder charge because she murdered my son. I always, um, the question that I, I keep asking is, what if she was not a police officer? I just want us to put that aside and just say that one of the other neighbors made all this, these mistakes that led to a murder. Mm. I want her to be treated just like that person. That's one justice to me. But even before we get there, she cannot continue to receive state funds by way of a salary after committing such an offense. So these are the two major things that I would like to see coming out of this case. Allison and Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. We will be back with more AM to DM.